Hello and welcome to the BSS 1250 channel. Today I'm going to show you how this uh, Burroughs Class 1 works. So basically you've got the uh, keyboard up here. You've got a total key right here, a repeat key right here, and an arrow key right here. I'll go over what those are in a minute. Um, in the front here you've got the register display so you can see the running total that you have. And then in the back is the printer. And on the side here you've got the drive crank to actually drive the machine. So I'll turn this to its side and we can start by showing what the, uh, the drive crank exactly does. Okay, so the drive crank is it goes into a shaft which is attached to this ring-like piece right here. And this serves the purpose of making sure that you pull the crank all the way forward and then back to complete a cycle. So it has this little ratchet here. And if I push the handle forward, you can see the ratchet engages and it won't go back until you go all the way forward and then it can come back. So that's the point of this ratchet and these little teeth here. And then down here, you can see this, the, just the top of it, this shaft is attached right here to this rivet. And this drives a shaft that goes all the way across the back. So you can see if I pull the handle, you can see this piece also moves. So that's the shaft going from here to here pushing that shaft backwards. You can see it moving there. And then that shaft is attached with these springs to another shaft that goes from here through the machine out the other side. And basically what happens is, um, well, I should probably show you this from the other side, but this, this shaft, which is driven by the springs from the main shaft, is attached to a dampener and the reason why it's attached with the springs is so that if you pull the handle very fast the springs add some kind of cushioning so that the handle isn't pulling directly against the dampener and the reason they have the dampener is that so when you release the handle it doesn't snap back it has some slowness to it just to uh, not put so much stress on the parts and you can see back in the back here is the printer mechanism and I should probably show you the handlers from the other side um, see, can you see, you can see these pieces right here, yeah, that's just the support. Um, so let me turn back to the front and show you what exactly the keyboard does and then the rest of it will make sense when I explain it. So each key on the keyboard is attached to one of these little hooks here. You can see each column has these little hooks. So if I push the one key, you can see that this hook right here retracted. If I clear it, I'll pop back out again. And then two will cause this one to retract. And three will cause the next one, and so on. And what those do is those act as stops. So when you pull the handle, the handle pulls with it a tooth piece of metal that sits in between. So you can see there's a gap here in between these two pieces of metal. Well, inside that gap, it back further, is another piece of metal that is driven with the crank. And these, these hooks here act as stops for that piece of metal. So basically when you pull the handle, each piece of metal in between these other pieces, we'll call them sliders. So each slider in between here is driven by springs with the crank. I can probably show you those better from the other side. But when you pull the handle, it tries to pull those sliders down as far as they can down here in this direction. And these hooks here act as stops. So if I push the one in, it will only drop down a little bit and get stopped by that hook. If I push the five in, it will drop all the way down here and get stopped by that hook. And as it drops down, it also drives the register forward the appropriate number of positions. And at the same time, in the back, it's raising the print head to the right position to print the right number. So let me turn this from the other side so I can show you exactly what I mean. So you can see right here, these pieces, these are attached to the slider. So these go up and then they have a piece of metal attached to them that goes up through here. And I'm not sure if I can show you that clearly. It's going to be pretty hard to see. See if you can look 
right through there. So this is the slider right here that I'm pointing to, this piece right here. So if I push six in this column, you'll see that that drops down with the handle. See, there it goes. You can see it dropped out the bottom now. And then it comes back up when the handle returns. And that piece has a teeth on it, so it dropped down until it hit the, um, the hook on the front for six, and as it dropped down, it drove the gear the appropriate number positions as well. And then if you look at the back here, you can see these are the uh, print heads right here. And basically, each of these print heads is just attached on the same rocker as the slider. So this rocker goes up, across the shaft, and then back down to the print head. So it's all one big piece of metal that's connected. That's one big piece of metal. That's the slider up through the shafts up here, across a a, a these pieces of metal right here. See what I'm pointing at? These pieces of metal right here. So the slider is attached to this, and then this piece of metal goes up over a shaft, and then is also attached to the front heads back here. So let me get you a better view, and you'll see that I push the six key again, and you'll see that as I pull the handle, the print head also rises up as the same time the slider is dropping down. And then when it gets to the appropriate position, this hammer right here will stamp the uh, printer against the patent. Of course, I don't have the patent in place right now, but it would if this was down in place. You can see it swung forward there and stamped the six, and then everything returns. Well, over here, you can see this piece right here is the dampener. And this is attached to this other shaft right here. And this is the same shaft that I showed from the other side, which is driven by springs off the main shaft. So every time you pull the handle, you can see the dampener drops down. And then just a little bit of dampening to the return crank so that it doesn't slam back against the tension of the springs. Um, what, something else I wanted to mention about the uh, register is the carries, and let me turn this back around to the front. So these things right here are part of the carry trailers. And every time this thing goes a full revolution and then back to zero, it triggers a carry over to the next column. And basically what happens is, these teeth have little um, snail cams on them. They're not these teeth. These wheels have little snail cams on them. And if I put five in there, you'll be able to see it. There you can see right here. Here's the, the tip of the snail cam. So the snail cam comes up and then has this tip here and then drops back down. And when this snail cam goes all the way around and passes by the um, there's a little trigger back there, that triggers a carry, and what happens is it releases a little catch on the slider, and the slider in the next column is allowed to move up one position, and that drives the, two, the gear here forward one additional position. So if I add five more to this column, you'll see that this column will jump ahead one position. And you can see that's happened, and now this is a three, when it was a two before. And at the same time, this little thing here has dropped back. So you can see this one is out forward, this one's back against the shaft here. And the point of these things is so that you can't press total when there's a pending carry. So you can see the total key here is now locked. So I hope that made sense. Basically all that happens is the snail cam trips a release that allows this slider to jump up one position uh, that's one position behind his normal resting position and then it sets this so that the total key can't be pressed. And the reason for that is because if the total key was pressed now um, it would give an erroneous total because how the total key works is it drops the sliders down until these wheels hit zero and then when these wheels hit zero the slider in each column stops. So if I did a total now all of these columns would not drop at all because they're already at zero and this column would drop three positions, and then at that point the wheel would hit zero, and the snail cam would hit against the stopper, 
and stop the um, slider from dropping any further and that will give you your accurate total. However, because this slider is back one position that it normally is, if the sliders were allowed to drop until these wheels set zero, the printer for this slider would actually print a, a four instead of a three because it has to make up the one position that it dropped back plus the extra three positions to zero. I'm um, hoping that's making sense. Um, but all of these machines, all the adding machines, they don't let you total when there's a pending carry. Um, most adding machines won't let you total um, at all after an ad, you have to do a blank crank. On this machine, it only makes you do a blank crank if there's a pending carry like there is here. So if I pull the handle again, you'll see that this will reset like that, and now the total key can be pressed. And all that the total key does is it changes the timing of the register engagement and disengagement. So normally during an addition, when you when you pull the handle, the register is engaged, or it's disengaged, and then engaged. So if I put something in here, like 34, and I pull the handle, you see that this pushes the register forward a little bit. So right now it's disengaged. So the sliders are gonna come down. You can see these sliders have stopped now. They're at their, um, they were stopped by the catches for the keys. The handle will go all the way down, and now the register will re-engage. You can see now it's popped up, now it's being engaged, and now the sliders are driving it forward, like so. Now, if I do a total, you'll see that the register will remain engaged. Now the sliders are being stopped by the uh, register returning to zero. Now the register will disengage. So now it's disengaged. And everything returns home. So all the total key does is it moves this just a little bit and that changes the timing of the register engagement disengagement so that when you do a total, um, the, the sliders drop down until all the wheels hit zero. Then they disengage and then that leaves all the wheels at zero so that, because um, if, you, if you had left the register engaged, then on the way back up, the sliders would drive it back to the, the original position, which is not what you want. You want to clear it, so it disengages and then the sliders come back up and that leaves all the wheels at zero. So I hope that's making sense as far as how this machine works. Uh, it's not super complicated. Uh, there is one more thing, that the auto clearing mechanism, which is on this side. So this is the, the clear key right here. And if, I, if you push the handle, you'll see this is the bar that does the clearing. On the way back, you can see that that bar is driven to clear the keyboard. So you watch it, it'll, it'll push forward right there, and that clears the keyboard. If you hold this repeat key down, that will not happen. You see that it's not good. And what that changes is this little thing here. If you watch this drops down, and on its way back up, right now, see it'll push that. Here it pushes it, and that clears it. If you lock the repeat key down, then that won't happen. This is prevented from dropping all the way down. You see it stops right there, and then it never drops down enough to hit this to clear the keyboard. So I think that is about it. Um, the only other thing is on the carriage. See this right here is the uh, paper drive. So normally this would be held in place by the paper, and then it's just a, a simple ratchet mechanism that drives that to uh, pull the paper forward. Um, I think that's about it then, that's basically how this machine works. So pretty simple, just um, you know, slider, slider drop down that's determined by the keyboard, or if you're totaling, determined by the register positions. So. Hope you enjoyed this look at the uh, internals and basic principle of uh, Burroughs Class 1.
So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.